Right. Happy Saturday. How you doing? Oh, hang on right there. Maybe we'll hear that one later. But today we're featuring Out of It. Yeah, we heard that one the other day, Borderline. Alright, so sorry about that. Good morning, afternoon, or evening. Wherever you might be in time and space. Kenny is here. Uh moving up to the to the pew pew. So everything up to this point has been Microsoft Flight Simulator. And now uh, friends want to shoot me out of the sky. And they have encouraged me. Uh, I played with this like five years ago or more and barely made it through the training. It was awful difficult. Didn't know much about flying at the time. So that made things even worse. And um, anyway, now that I've been... Uh, Streaming for a while and and doing all kinds of different flying. They're like, come on now, it's time for you to get back into the uh, DCS world. We want to blow you up. Okay. All right. We get my automatic scene switcher going here, and we will have a look. All right, so I made it through finally two sessions yesterday to get through all the training. And the first time through, basically, I failed at least half of them right off the bat. Even the simplest ones. Honestly, the simplest one, takeoff. 
honestly, I failed takeoff. So you have nose wheel turning, and I'm not used to that. I'm used to rudder turning by using your joystick. And I figured, well, if you've got that, you'll be just fine, right? So when I took off down the runway, uh, I started sliding heavy to the left and was off the runway, and I flipped over the plane and blew it up. Yeah, on takeoff. Botched the landing, came in too fast, gears didn't deploy down, crashed on the runway. Yeah, the simplest things, right? Yep. All right, so <coughs> I'm going to hang out here just a moment. <coughs> Excuse me. It's snowing here. It's cold here in Colorado. And I'm waiting to see if uh, any of my friends pop in and if they want to have me connect to a server to do some basic pew pew. I don't think I know enough to. And I'm going to go back through the basic training again today and then maybe try some, uh, you know, uh, dogfighter training or just target practice. And uh, I've got to get my head around all the different types of weapons that they have. And then last night, uh, the, uh, the night vision. In all the videos that I'm watching on the training videos, all their night visions work. My night vision, for whatever reason, does not function in at this time. So I couldn't complete the uh, the laser guided night mission, and so I'm like, is is it my is is it me am I, or is this the way it's supposed to be? And so I started watching videos last night on it, and yeah, all, all of their night vision stuff looks different. They can see things I can't, so I don't know what the problem is there. I updated my uh, video driver before coming on. There he is. There's heading. Hey, I am. Trying to find out if you are available right now and might want to fly together or do anything together and have you kind of take the lead on what to do. Or if not, uh, I made it through all the training last night. I got my little pilot medal for completing all the training, but I can't say all of it was great. So I want to go back in there today and uh, really take notes on the different types of weapons and what they're best used for, really take note of that. And um, try to be a little bit more effective today. I finally did manage to blow up a few things last night. I did learn how to eject. That was nice. <coughs> You're flying right now, yes. Okay, so that means I'm supposed to go find a server. Right, I'm supposed to go to the 298. 298, which is, or is it 289? That didn't pull up anything. Right, 289. Yeah. 289th training for all, the Caucasus. Let's see what Henning says here. Oh, okay. Uh, should we be meeting at the 289th server? If you don't like flying in circles, you may not enjoy this, uh, this live stream. You end up doing endless circling. And then she's not the, uh, you know, this isn't multi-vector engines. This is, uh, an older Russian fighter plane the frog foot it's pretty impressive no matter what but you know as far as just spinning on a dime that ain't happening so and then you you know i miss a lot so lots of flying in circles and then lots of ridiculous mistakes and and failures so we'll made a wait a minute here uh henning's landing so this uh, might as well let me talk about DCS and some of the things I've learned about it. So if you're one of those folks that likes to set up your own missions, you can, it's got to, you can create fast missions. Well, let's just start from the top. Instant action, right? And these are all the things you can do. Free flight, dusk landing, dogfight, target practice, close air support, close air support medium, close air support difficult, and Sam Killer. 
create a fast mission. So you can set up the aircraft, the country, start from enemy AI skill, theater war, seasons, weather, start time, historical, and then there's an advanced mode. Campaigns, multiplayer, and um, missions. All right, my missions and SU-25T missions, I guess. But it looks like it's really, really complex. If you, well, not co I mean, if you really want to get in there and create amazing content, amazing ad adventures, I mean, you have the ability to place everything, tell them how to move, how to react. So it's all really groovy stuff. I don't think I'm going to be doing any of that. But it's cool that it, it's got, oh yeah, down here. Mission Editor and Campaign Builder. Okay. We could go to Blitz Jaeger and do some Mustang action because Hans is taking one dogfight spot right now and he's AFK. For the next two hours, Sam Killer is an awesome mission. You did it multiple times. All right, so we could go to Blitz Jaeger. So I don't have the Mustang. Does it does it give you the Mustang or I fight in the fight in the SC twenty five and you get the Mustang or how's this working? And would I be searching Blitzjäger in multiplayer? Blitzjäger. Yeah, I see Blitzjäger, French server one two server GM. I should own it. I don't, I don't. Oh, it doesn't have weapons, but it's fun for flying. Uh, unless it comes for free with DCS World. Then I would not have it. I guess I should already have it. All right, so there's Blitzjager Server 1, Server 2, and 2GM. If not, I can fly the 25. Check, go to instant action, and it says P51. You already have it. I have the uh, TF51D. TF51D. I can't make out what it is. Um, that's the Mustang, huh? <laughs> um, hmm. Okay, so back to multiplayer then. You call it Blitzjäger. All right, so now which server? And how do you pick your plane once you get in there? Map region.
first one. All right. This might take a moment. Take a little while to get into the one, uh, the 289th last night. So it looks like we'll do just a little bit of maybe free flying, I guess. And then we'll get back to the uh, basic training and try to get some pew pew in today. Hey, if you're coming in from Twitter, please, 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 please say hi so I can see your screen name. And if you have a YouTube channel, I would love to subscribe to your channel. Need another cup of coffee. Yeah, this might take a minute. I'm going to play uh, Brad Sucks Again, the uh, Out of It song. It's such a good tune for, I don't know, people that have been out of it. And a lot of us have.
Just scanning Twitter while we were waiting for that to load, and they're talking about the the Black National Anthem being played at the Super Bowl. And there's so many uh, academics out there that are talking about the, you know, how communism is implemented and how um, you can destroy a nation by, again, we're not one, you're not one nation under God. Now it's the Black National Anthem or the Latino National Anthem. And uh, that's unfortunate. Uh, so, you know, academics will tell you, look, man, that's that's the worst thing we could do. And no offense, you know. Well, I guess, yeah, take offense. You know, it's a communist, it's a Marxist divisionary plan. So, okay, all right, so we're here. And availability, uh, da 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 da, -da. Now scroll down to the WW2. There's a person named Flieger. Flieger ass? What? Now scroll down to the World War II. World War Two. Uh huh. Okay, I see it. But right now. Oh, ass is ace in German. All right, I thought I could only select the ones that are highlighted. I'll, I'll try to highlight this. But I don't see that I'm getting a highlight. You can click on the second row right below your name. Second row. Uh huh. Ah. So that what you're saying is there's one, two, three. There's four spots in this, in this one. Eleven, 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 eleven. Okay. So I'm occupying the second spot. Okay. Server Blitzjäger. Lot ATC for DCS. No, I can't turn my head yet. So this is the P-51 Mustang, huh? Seems to still be loading. Aha. Uh -huh. Right. Look left this way. There's Henning, folks. Alt C toggles cursor. Learned that one last night. Yeah. Is this a study raid? Why can't I look around the cockpit with this thing? 
There we go. Okay, we got our. Well, this is a hot air intake. The bottom left is our flaps. Yeah, okay. That's a carb. Not the kind of carb you're thinking about. This is elevator trim, Eluron trim. Is this flaps? It doesn't seem like, no, that's rudder trim. Elurons. Bottle. Aha, flaps there. Yep. Connection timed out. Server ping timed out. We just crashed, sir. Maybe because we have such a high ping. Oh, no. You got disconnected, too? Well, hopefully now joining it the second time, we, we can go through authentication. Or whatever it is, much faster this time. Got my fingers crossed. So in nav mode yesterday, I think the biggest problem I had yesterday was uh, the, the frustrated me the most was navigation. I love doing navigation. Good, that was much faster. We might not, this might not work. The ping is over 150. It's not ideal, but we'll see what happens. Try again. World War II 11. Load it up faster. So in this aircraft, unlike the others, that uh, the SU-25, um, you don't mess with things in the cockpit. You um, you don't normally use cockpit. Let me see if it it works with my joystick. Nope. Well, that's kind of wonky. That would really, that's gonna, this is gonna really suck if it doesn't work with your joystick. That is tedious. That's flaps all the way up or all the way down. Away. Yeah, 
you have to do it incrementally. It's not, you can't just pull it all the way down. So you can tap your, so you hold the right mouse button. Hmm. And then left mouse over it, it goes down, right mouse over it, and right, I'm sorry, right click, left click. Oh, they're not moving. Oh, because we have no power. I don't know. All right, and then the black lever on the side also needs to be put up. The black lever by that also needs to be put up. This is your carburetor cold air control. Landing lights on, coolant automatic, radiator coolant automatic, mixture control for lower altitudes. Okay, that's cut off, cut off medium, no. full, half, cut. All right, supercharger, just the starter, primer, fuel boost. I don't know if we need oil to boot on. We need probably the primer on now. I don't want this into both, I believe. Cockpit, wing lights. Right. Cursor, cursor, cursor. Where are you? Position lights. Don't mess with the mixture, please. Let it cut off, please. Propel it all the way up with the picture up. But you need to set your trim. Leave the mix and cut off. All right. Mix, cut off, trim. Uh, what? Up trim to start with. A little bit of up trim. Rudder trim. Probably don't really need any. Put that at zero. Aileron trim. At the moment, zeroed. You might get some torque, right? So we might have to add a little right. I don't know. All right. Propeller all the way up. Where is the propeller control? Fuel cut off. We're going to want that on. Oh, it's got a headphone jack for something so old. That's cool. <laughs> all right. Uh, 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 rudder five degrees right trim Eliron two left all 
Okay, so rudder, five degrees right and uh, two degrees left on Aileron. So Aileron, uh, there. That's probably two there, and then five on rudder. Rudder trim, five right. That is a lot. Is that left? All right. Well, there's five, and I'm over on the right side. All right. RPM, Ronald. Uh, Oh, well, how do you? Oh, man, I just timed out again. No, oh, I'm sorry. All right. So we need to find with a much one with a much uh, shorter lag, a ping, right? So disconnect from the server. I'm guessing that's what it is. I'm not entirely sure. I, I don't know, but 152 is... I heard 200 is, is... You shouldn't go over 200, so... Hello, James. Hey, we're all new here. <laughs> Welcome aboard, Captain. As you can see, we're doing some DCS world. If you have it loaded up, then feel free to join us, I, I guess. We're looking for another server at the moment. We're crashing on the one that we're currently trying to occupy. And, uh... Gonna try to do a little possibly just a little free flying for a bit. Well, that's what that's the goal. And then uh get back to the training and possibly some pew pew. Pew them up.
Well, today is not one of my normal Sky Dude episodes where I'm going to be traveling around today. Today, uh, using this DCS World Combat Simulator, Henny wants to, uh, the gentleman in the chat room, Burger LOL, his name is Henny, and uh, he's itching to shoot me out of the sky, sir. Okay, so we found a new server. Okay. We'll get the details here in a moment. While I'm uh, waiting for that to come up, let me um, go to the James Q4 channel and subscribe. And he's following Taylor's Travels. Gentleman named John, Acts of Kindness, Cruise Ship Live. Nice. Have any videos yet? Not yet. No problem. If you do, uh, I am subscribed now, and I will know when you when you do. So you found one. All right. What is the details? Do, 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 do. Waiting on some for waiting on some information to come in as to which server we're going to join or attempt to join. And he says he's found one. That noise in the background. Everybody say hello to Christine. During these live streams, I'm usually getting a call from my significant other. Say hello, Chris. Hey. Okay. And scrolling down the blue team up, uh, but 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 you haven't said what server we're supposed to join. When I scroll down the list. I wonder if they're going to make a new DCS at any time. I mean, this one is, was created in 2008. They're celebrating their 15th year. That's a long time without releasing a brand new version. So I can only imagine how good it would be now if they were to do a, a rewrite. Hey, thank you for subscribing, James. I really appreciate that. Thank you for even taking a minute out. I'm sorry that we're not into some action right at the moment. DCS online. Yes, that is what we're uh, currently playing. If you have Steam, it's DCS World on Steam. Uh, some people say don't. If you even if you have it on Steam, I found this out too late. Some people say if, if you don't have it on Steam. Go to the website and download it there because um, usually with the one you can get off their website, you get to try a bunch of the planes for free. Whereas the Steam version doesn't do that. Yeah. 
you said the name twice now. I'm sorry, I I don't see it. I see. Hello, I'm new here. Hello, James. Where are we going this afternoon? Found one. Scrolling down the blue team, you can select the Mustang. So in our chat, I don't I don't see it in our chat. You said that you did say the name twice now. If you're saying it, I'm not hearing it like like a microphone. So I'm just supposed to be finding DCS online. I'm sorry, man. I'm new to all this. I, I don't know what I'm looking for. We really need to get uh, hook. I need to get you hooked up for a microphone, or we need some sort of voice communication. I don't have a DCS online server. All right, I did type DCS. Okay. Then scroll down to the blue team. You can select Mustang. That's a 286. Yeah, I've typed in DCS online. I don't have it. Maybe try with the IP. Okay, what IP do you have?
11 minutes after the hour, Kenny is here on a Saturday. Normally don't do weekend shows, usually doing Dungeons and Dragons on Saturdays, but everybody's been out and doing things. Two of the players are going to a concert today. So I had an opportunity to jump back in and continue my training in DCS world. Right now we're trying to find a server that we can connect to uh, and fly some Mustangs together for a little while and then maybe do some dog fighting. But we haven't been able to find a server. I can't find the server that Henning is referring to, so I'm not sure what to do at the moment. I'm just standing by. So, smoke if you got him. Grab my, uh, grab my cigarettes over here. Anyway, I'm sorry, man. I, I don't know how to do any of this. I don't, uh, I don't, uh, I, sorry, I didn't read the manual on when it came to the multiplayer stuff. I really don't, I don't know what I'm doing. I can click the button, but I don't know what I'm clicking to, and then it's got password. I I don't know. Aren't I supposed to change this and put in the URL of the one that you're trying to connect to? And then you've crashed again? All right. Well... Well, hum, Bubba. If you're coming in from Twitter, how you guys doing, man? I haven't had a chance to really get back in there since the uh, Tucker Carlson, Vladimir Putin interview, which has given us a lot to think about. And, uh, and then our president coming out after that, and I thought he was going to address the... Uh, interview and he had nothing to say really about it other than just don't believe just don't believe him that's that's the answer that we've gotten from everybody so far just don't believe him and i would really like more information i don't appreciate being told just don't believe somebody somebody comes out and they make a hundred points in an in a argument i want all those points point for point rebutted I don't want, just, hey, just don't believe him. Really? Mm, that's the best you got? No. It doesn't quite work for me. So I'm pretty upset about that. I'm still waiting to see if somebody will do, if Washington, the White House, will release a a point-for-point um, point rebuttal. But again, if they're not going to, I mean, I, I don't know what to believe anymore, and that's the point they've got us, you know, five generation, fifth generation, whatever they call it, fifth generation warfare, where there's so much disinformation floating around out there. There's so much propaganda that the average citizen can't determine what's what's right. So Putin's saying, this guy, we're Nazis, and uh, pointing fingers at other people saying they're Nazis, and they're pointing fingers at him saying, well, he's the Nazi, and ridiculous. No, if anything, I'm going to practice my, uh... so we'll try this again later. Okay. All right, then, I'm going to go back to, uh... I'm going to go through the training, I think, again. Just pick it up from the start. I've got to go through and I've got to uh, really get a handle on these weapons. Because in the mission, they're like, hey, for, for target practice, they hook you up with a bunch of weapons, but then I've forgotten, you know, well, well what does this one do and what does that one do and which is the best one for this and... Yeah, that's fine. There's Mustang training. Ah. 
All right. Yeah, let's do that. All right, folks, we're doing something. I apologize. We're an hour into the live stream, but you know, these things aren't, uh, they have to, they're fluid, man. You know, just got to roll with it. So yeah, they got us by the cojones and they, they you know, we, uh, they're all, this guy's doing this. And then they turn around, they're like, no, he's doing that. And everybody's pointing the finger at everybody else. And they're all calling each other the same things. And it's so easy to believe Vladimir Putin. That's the weird thing. It's so easy easy to believe him and anytime that we've been in a conflict and he's made a statement on it he always seems to be on our side that's weird right so we're big in the united states we're big on our second amendment the uh, the right to bear arms shall not be infringed right so a couple of presidents ago took advantage of some horrible things that happened in the United States and tried a giant, giant, giant gun grab. And Putin immediately got made a statement which wasn't broadcast over here. And Putin said, listen up, Americans. Do not, under any circumstances, give up your Second Amendment and do not give up your weapons. Wow. Is he our friend or is he our enemy? Well, my goodness. You know, everybody was really upset with our one of our presidents trying to take all of our guns away. And we're still upset as each of these presidents have tried to take our guns away. And Vladimir Putin's over there saying, don't do it, America. Don't do it. Have we frozen again? We'll give it another minute to load. This thing has froze on us on loading. That'd be par for the course. That's Murphy's Law with all this stuff. Stuff is, just goes wrong. But we'll give it a minute. And um, so all of his points were... Amazingly... But easy to understand about, uh, you know, what's been going on from his perspective over there on his side of the world. And he's really pointed the finger at us and said, you guys are really out of control. You made promises and you, you lie and you lie and you lie and you, you've broken all your promises to us over and over again. You played our friendship to your advantage to move all of your weapons closer and closer and closer and closer to Russia while claiming, hey, we're friends, aren't we? And then not allowing them into NATO. And despite repeated attempts to get into NATO, with all of our presidents, they've denied him. So I think this is locked up. Okay. Now we'll reload it and try it again. It's froze, froze. Doesn't want to shut down. Had to force it to shut down.
Anyway, he's given us a lot to think about. Definitely a lot to talk about. But I'm not going to listen to anybody who's not making points. They're just over there on Twitter. He's a Nazi. Don't believe anything he says. You got to do better than that. Right again. That looks like a Spitfire, but I don't know. So many plans. No, maybe this is the P-51. It's got that intake at the bottom. Exhaust looks more like an intake. Welcome to the cockpit overview lesson. Today, we will take a detailed look at the Mustang cockpit. You can use mouse look mode to move your view around the cockpit. To turn mouse look mode on and off, press left alt plus C. Throughout this lesson, pressing the space bar key will initiate the next consecutive step once instructions for the current one are complete. Press the space bar key when you are ready to begin. The cockpit is configured in a standard layout. With the instrument panel positioned on the front dash, a center mounted control stick, a throttle quadrant on the left side, and various aircraft system controls on the left and right panels. With the exception of the flaps control handle, which is located in the bottom left corner of the cockpit, most of the indicators and controls are well organized and easy to read and reach. Moving on to the instrument panel, the upper left corner houses the remote indicating compass. The compass unit is installed inside the left wing and transmits magnetic readings electrically to the cockpit indicator. Using a remote compass avoids the magnetic effects caused by armor plating around the cockpit, experienced by a standard magnetic compass. The remote indicating compass includes a heading needle, which shows the current heading, and a desired heading needle, which can be turned using the indicator knob to set a desired course reference on the indicator. To turn the knob, you can simply roll the mouse wheel over it. All right. Dun, 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 dun. Alt C. There we go. Yeah. Okay. So we can change the core setting of this away or that away. 
To the right of the remote indicating compass is a standard clock. The winding knob can be used to set the time. Doing so requires pulling the knob out with the left mouse button, then rolling the mouse wheel over the knob to rotate it. See? The suction gauge indicates the amount of pressure in inches of mercury being generated by the engine vacuum pump. Vacuum pressure is used by a number of vital instruments, including the flight indicator, bank and turn indicator, and the directional gyro. A suction reading above or below normal means the readings of these indicators are unreliable. Like your pitot tube. Next is the manifold pressure indicator. This is one of the primary instruments used in flight and together with the tachometer or engine RPM indicator is your main reference of engine power. The manifold pressure indicator shows gas pressure inside the engine induction system prior to entering the cylinders. Like the suction gauge, the indication is in inches of mercury. Manifold pressure is set using the throttle handle, while engine RPM is set using the propeller control lever, also on the throttle quadrant. On the left side of the middle row of the instrument panel is the airspeed indicator, which shows an indicated airspeed in miles per hour, MPH. The red line on the indicator marks the maximum permissible airspeed of 505 miles per hour. It's important to remember that maximum permissible indicated airspeed is reduced as altitude increases. For example, it is 400 MPH at 20,000 feet and 300 MPH at 30,000 feet. Yes, sir. In the left center of the instrument panel is the directional gyro, which shows current heading. The instrument can be caged and the heading adjusted manually by pushing in and rotating the indicator knob. In the center right of the instrument panel is the flight indicator, which shows the aircraft's roll and pitch attitude relative to the horizon. The indicator is limited to 60 degrees in pitch and 100 degrees in roll. The instrument can be caged or uncaged using the caging knob in the lower right corner of the indicator. The horizon level can be adjusted vertically using the pitch adjust knob. To the right of the flight indicator are two temperature gauges, the coolant temperature gauge above and the carburetor air temperature below. It's important to monitor these instruments in flight as temperatures rising above normal may lead to serious engine problems such as detonation and pre-ignition. Always fun. On the right side of the middle row of the instrument panel is the tachometer. This instrument indicates engine speed in revolutions per minute, RPM. The pilot controls engine speed using the propeller control lever on the throttle quadrant. A propeller governor system automatically adjusts propeller pitch angles to maintain the RPM set by the pilot. Typical RPM settings in flight will be between 1,800 and 3,000 RPM. Moving to the bottom row of the instrument panel, the left corner houses the altimeter. The altimeter shows barometric or pressure altitude using a three-needle system. The shortest needle shows altitude in tens of thousands of feet, the middle needle in thousands of feet, and the longest needle in hundreds of feet. The indicator knob is used to adjust the sea level reference pressure in inches of mercury to ensure an accurate altitude reading over a desired location where the sea level air pressure is known. Right, your altimeter and your knob to adjust based on the pressure. It's usually 2992 at sea level. Next is the bank and turn indicator, primarily used to maintain coordinated flight and minimize side slip. The vertical needle of the instrument indicates turn rate, and the slip ball indicates side slip or side skid. In flight, the pilot maintains the ball centered by using stick and rudder controls or aileron and rudder trim. Flight trim is very sensitive to changes in engine power and airspeed, so constant attention must be paid to the bank and turn indicator in order to fly as efficiently as possible. To the right is the rate of climb indicator, which shows the climb rate in thousands of feet per minute. Further to the right is the accelerometer, or G-meter, this indicator shows the G-load factor experienced by the aircraft, as well as two additional needles that show the maximum and minimum G-loads attained since the instrument was last reset. The instrument includes a reset button used to reset the needles to zero.
Finally, on the very right is the engine gauge. This instrument includes three indicators, the oil temperature gauge, oil pressure gauge, and the fuel pressure gauge. Moving below the instrument panel, the engine control panel includes a number of important engine controls. These include supercharger blower switch, sets the supercharger to low, high, or automatic blower modes. Normally, this should be set to auto. The jewel light indicator lights up when the supercharger kicks into high blower mode. Fuel booster switch, turns the fuel booster pumps on and off. Oil dilute switch, used to dilute the oil with gasoline, which may be necessary when starting in cold temperatures. Starter switch, used to turn the engine prior to ignition during startup. Primer switch, used to feed fuel to the engine through the fuel primer system during startup. To the right are the two landing gear warning lights. These indicate safe or unsafe states of the landing gear. For example, the unsafe red light will be on if the gear doors are open, but the landing gear is unlocked. Adjacent to the landing gear warning light is the parking brake handle. Setting the parking brake requires the following steps. Pull out and hold the parking brake handle. Fully depress and release the brakes. Release the parking brake handle. Releasing the parking brake only requires a press of the brake pedals. On the right side below the instrument panel are the oxygen indicators, the oxygen flow indicator, and the oxygen pressure gauge. The oxygen flow indicator features a blinker that opens and closes as the pilot inhales and exhales on demand oxygen. The oxygen pressure gauge shows the amount of oxygen remaining in the O2 tanks in pounds per square inch, PSI. A normal reading is 400 PSI. Just below the instrument panel is the front switch panel, which includes a variety of important controls. Ignition selector switch. Selects the left, right, or both needles to operate the engine ignition system. Cockpit light switch. Turns on and adjusts the cockpit floodlights. Horn silence button. Silences the AN-APS-13 rear warning radar alarm. Below the front switch panel is the fuel control panel. This includes the fuel shutoff valve, used to open and close the fuel flow, and the fuel selector valve, used to select the fuel tank used to feed the engine. Correct fuel tank selection is important in flight to maintain a balanced aircraft. To the right of the fuel control panel are the hydraulic pressure gauge and the landing gear fairing doors emergency release handle. The landing gear fairing doors emergency release handle can be used to release the hydraulic pressure and mechanical locks holding the gear doors closed. This will open the fairing doors and allow the landing gear to fall down under its own weight. Slight rolling of the aircraft from side to side can be used to ensure the gear locks in place prior to landing. Normal pressure for the hydraulic system is 800 to 1100 PSI. The surface control lock is used to lock the control stick in place when the aircraft is parked. Left clicking over the pin locks the stick in a forward position, which leaves the tail wheel unlocked and allows the aircraft to be towed and turned easily. Right clicking on the pin locks the stick in the neutral position which leaves the tailwheel limited to six degrees of turn. Moving to the left side of the cockpit, the throttle quadrant dominates the forward section. The throttle quadrant includes the throttle handle, the propeller control lever, and the mixture control lever. In addition, two friction locks are mounted on the assembly and can be used to stop the movement of the throttle handle or the mixture and propeller control levers. The throttle handle features a microphone switch button used to activate transmission over the VHF radio. Throttle quadrant dominates the forward section. The throttle quadrant includes the throttle handle and the propeller control level, level lever and the mixture control lever. So this can, okay, this can go forward. What about propeller control? That would be microphone transmission. Oh, oh, here's propeller control, propeller RPM. Gotcha. 
Moving back from the throttle quadrant, the radiator air control panel includes switches to operate the coolant and oil radiator flap doors. These are usually kept in automatic, but can be opened and closed manually when necessary. This panel also includes the landing light switch and the left-hand fluorescent light rheostat switch, which controls instrument backlighting on the left side of the cockpit. Let's see. All right. Press the space bar. The wheels are used to set the aileron, rudder, and elevator trim. Take off with five to six degrees of right rudder trim to help compensate for engine torque. Trim settings in flight may vary depending on flight conditions. That's what I thought. Like it's it uh, it has to be for the torque that that engine is knocking out. The two handles toward the left rear of the cockpit control airflow to the engine induction system. The ram air control handle controls whether air is ingested through the main intake under the nose or filtered intakes on either side of the nose. Filtered air is used when icing of the intake develops. The hot air control handle opens a vent door in the engine compartment to allow warm air to enter the carburetor. This can be done below 12,000 feet when icing of the carburetor is a danger. So this is in case of icing. Probably the most awkward control in the cockpit is the flaps control handle in the bottom left corner. The flaps can really? be set from 0 to 47 marked 50 degrees in 10 degree increments. The landing gear control handle is also on the left side. The handle is pulled in and moved up or down to raise and lower the landing gear as desired. The gear should only be moved when it's locked in either the up or down position. Landing gear control handle is also on the left side. Ah, right down there. And that, no, oh, that's right payload salvo. Landing gear control handle. Now moving on to the right side of the cockpit, we have two canopy controls. The canopy is rolled open and closed by turning the canopy hand crank. The red handle is the emergency canopy release. When pulled, this will unlock the canopy and it will fly off into the slipstream. Once I get to the top, there we go. If I let it go here uh -huh. I think I got it All right. The oxygen regulator is used to control oxygen flow to the pilot's mask. The oxygen diluter lever, marked with yellow stripes, is used to set normal diluted oxygen or 100% oxygen. The red emergency valve is a separate backup oxygen line and can be used to bypass the regulator. That's tough one. Automix on off. It's hard when you can't turn sideways. And see. Let's 
sure which one. Does that read? Can't tell if that's on or off. Oxygen emergency bypass. The recognition lights keen switch is used to flash the recognition lights installed on the underside of the right wing tip when they are set to key mode on the electrical panel. The lights turn on for as long as the keen switch is held down and off when it is released. The electrical control panel includes switches for battery and generator power, pedal tube, and external lighting. In addition, the right-hand fluorescent light rail stat switch controls the back lighting for instruments on the right side of the cockpit. The electrical control panel also includes an important indicator, the ammeter. This shows current output of the generator in amperes. Maximum permissible output is 100 amperes. The ammeter does not show battery current. Finally, the electrical control panel uh. also includes a circuit breaker bump plate. This can be pressed in to reset all the circuit breakers in case one or more of them gets overloaded and pops out. Further back from the electrical control panel is the AN-APS-13 Rear Warning Radar, or RWR. This device sounds an alarm when an object is detected behind the aircraft to warn the pilot of a possible threat approaching from the rear. Next is the SCR-522 VHF radio, used for communication with flight members and air traffic controllers. The radio features five channels, the frequencies for which are preset and cannot be changed in flight. You should consult your mission briefing prior to starting a flight to ensure your radio is set up to contact ATC towers in your vicinity. The remaining radio systems, including the homing adapter, IFF transponder, and Detroller range receiver are not functional in this aircraft. Let's now take a look at the fuel gauges. You may need to twist your head around the cockpit a little to see them. You can press left alt plus C to enable mouse view mode and then hold down the mouse wheel while moving the mouse to move your head around the cockpit. The gauges for the left and right main tanks are located on the floor to either side of the seat. The mouse, <clears throat> while you're in cursor mode, left alt, C. But I don't see a way to like slew my view in any way. And then hold down the mouse wheel while moving the mouse. Yeah, that, that's not working for me. Holding down the mouse wheel, I'm in Alt-C. Oh, well, I can't, I can't see it. Just have them like the Microsoft Flight Simulator way and move your, you can move your view around the cockpit. Finally. The area under the seat also houses cockpit environment. Well, how in the hell are you going to get to those? Frosting and cockpit heating and cooling. Oh, I see. Okay, fine. This concludes the cockpit overview lesson. Next time, we'll learn how to start her up. And I am assuming that's it. Okay. Well, one done. All right. Hey. Lee Tempest. It says Lee Tempest has subscribed. And I don't see him in the chat. Let me see if I can get to his channel. Go to channel. Oh, that's a stream elements channel. That's not Lee's channel, you silly thing. Hey, Lee, you should drop a hello in the uh, chat room. Because then that allows me to click on your name.
Welcome to the startup lesson. Press the space bar key to begin. The engine start sequence is not very complicated. We will move around the cockpit clockwise, starting on the left side to configure the aircraft for engine start. Let's begin with the flaps control handle, positioned to the rear bottom left side of the cockpit. For a normal takeoff, flaps are not usually lowered. However, 15 to 20 degrees of flaps can be used when a minimum run takeoff is required. Set the flaps control handle all the way up to the up position. To do this, you can either click and drag the handle with the mouse or press left shift plus F command repeatedly until it is all the way up. Note, the flaps won't actually come up until the engine is running and there is sufficient pressure uh -huh. in the hydraulic system. That's what I thought. Because when we were looking externally, we weren't getting anything. Now set the carburetor induction system for normal operation by moving the cold air control handle all the way forward to the ram air position and the hot air control handle all the way forward to the normal position. Roger. Done. Next, set the coolant and oil radiator air control switches to the auto position for automatic operation of the coolant and oil radiator flap doors. To do so, left click on the auto switch positions. Don't forget to close the switch covers after. Adjust the trim tabs to prepare for takeoff. Set rudder trim to 5 degres right. Elevator trim can be left neutral. Aileron trim remains neutral. Just the trim tabs, set the rudder to 5 degrees right. On the throttle quadrant, ensure the propeller RPM lever marked P is set all the way forward to increase and the fuel mixture lever marked M is set to idle cutoff. Set the throttle handle about one inch forward from the fullback position to slightly open the throttle butterfly valve and allow air to flow to the engine. If you don't have a throttle controller, the plus and minus keys on the keyboard numpad can be used to move the throttle handle. On the throttle quadrant, ensure that the propeller is set all the way forward. Okay, that was up here, and it's tucked behind the throttle. It's right here. It says P on it. Okay, that's all the way forward. Now, what he was saying about... Um, The mixture. And the mixture's set to idle cutoff. Moving to the engine control panel on the front dash, turn on the fuel booster pump by setting the fuel booster switch to the up position by clicking over the switch. I get it. Select the left and right magnetos to provide power to the engine ignition system by setting the ignition switch to both. Right. On the fuel control panel, ensure that the left wing tank is selected for fuel consumption by checking that the fuel selector valve is set to the main tank LH position. Open the fuel shutoff valve by clicking on it to set it to the on position. Let's set the parking brake to make sure we remain stationary when the engine begins to pull. You may want to open the controls indicator by pressing right control plus enter to monitor the positions of your flight controls, including the brakes. Setting the parking brake takes a few steps. First, pull out and hold the parking brake handle by clicking and holding it. You want to open the controls indicator, right control enter. to monitor the position of your flight controls, including brakes. Okay, I see it. All right, uh, and then pull the handle out. You have to constantly keep going back and forth between Alt-C. Next, while continuing to hold the parking brake handle, fully press the brake pedals by holding down the W key.
Uh, okay. We did, and he's not moving on. Continuing to hold the parking brake uh. handle, release the wheel brakes by releasing the W key. Now release the parking brake handle to set the parking brake. If done correctly, the parking brake handle should remain in the pulled out position. We'll now move on to the electrical control panel on the right side of the cockpit. Set the battery switch to the up position to provide electrical power. Also, set the generator switch to the up position to prepare the generator to take over once the engine is running over 1500 to 1700 RPM. Click and hold the primer switch on the engine control panel for about one second to feed some fuel to the engine. When started in cold temperatures, up to four seconds of prime may be necessary. We are now ready to attempt an engine start. To do so, first press and hold the starter switch to operate the starter and begin turning the engine. As the engine begins to catch, move the fuel mixture control lever on the throttle quadrant to the run position by right clicking on it once. If you aren't able to start the engine successfully, return the fuel mixer lever to idle cutoff by left clicking and repeat the process starting with priming the engine. Note: The engine starter can be easily overheated. The starter should not be used for more than 4 20 second attempts to start, with 15 second intervals, followed by a 5 minute cooling off period. In, is there any way to get, is, is, are there only three positions on this thing? Is there any way to just dial it in and move it? Slowly back and forth, because I'm not seeing, I'm only seeing cut off, run, or pull. And he says just ease it forward, but I'm not, I, there's no easing it forward. And how can you do so without any any uh, gas going? <clears throat> uh maybe we missed the fuel selector main tank the, the left tank I can't see what that one is. There were no other, there were no other fuel. Um, bye bye.
Okay. So he's saying every time that it doesn't start, move the mixture back to cut off. And that's not moving at all. And then repeat the priming process. And then try the starter again and move this to run. How can you hold down the starter and do both at the same time? You can't. Got it. Good start. Now we need to make sure the engine is running smoothly without any indications of a problem. Use the RPM gauge and adjust the throttle to run the engine at about 1200 to 1300 RPM. Monitor the engine gauge to check the oil pressure to reach at least 50 PSI and the oil temperature to reach at least 40 degrees Celsius. Check the suction gauge to make sure it is showing a normal suction reading of 3.75 to 4.25 inches. Press the space bar key to proceed. Everything just shut down. Son of a gun. Check the hydraulic pressure gauge to make sure it is reading a normal pressure of 800 to 1100 PSI. Check the oxygen pressure gauge to make sure it is reading a normal pressure of 400 PSI. Press the space bar key to proceed. Got me, boss. Makes no sense to me. All right. Looks like those gentlemen might be ready to try to do some uh, flying around. Two eighty nine has got a one hundred and eighty eight ping to me. <clears throat> it's two minutes after the hour I need to while we're loading into this server again um, go grab another coffee I shouldn't be but a minute or two and I'm going to say hello to Christine and stretch my legs a minute and I'll be right back for more uh, DCS goodness and let's where's that Brad sucks song today we're featuring uh, the tune out of it by Brad Sucks. Please like and subscribe the Brad Sucks channel. An amazing musician.
needs all the help he can get. Uh, actually, he, he's doing quite well. I need all the help I can get. He's doing just fine. But <laughs> I'm sure he would appreciate it. If you're considering uh, you need music for your live stream or, uh, or podcast, he's a good guy for that. And uh, he's got one of those options on YouTube where he can click and share. So if you use his stuff and if you're monetized, he can just select share and it splits the monetization for the the tracks that you play. So if you're cool with that, then he's a good guy to work with and I haven't had any problems. So I really enjoy working with him and he's just so freaking talented. I'll be right back. Wrong tune. Right tune. Okay. <clears throat> Pause right there. All right. So I am in the server, the 289. And we will know where to go in just a moment. 
I'm figuring maybe we're going down to the World War II stuff. I I don't know. Uh don't know. Hope you enjoyed that tune. He's amazing. Everything that he does sounds good. The dog mirror SU-25 should be free. I don't see dog. Dog blue. Dog blue. Dog blue mirror twenty five. That's twenty five. Uh, is, is this, is haste? Is it this one? Uh, I don't know. I see.
All right, I probably won't be doing much shooting, but at the moment, I'm just going to try to figure out how to get this thing under control. Get many, um... I'm not seeming to get any any volume at all out of the simulator, to be honest. I mean, we heard the gentleman talking. I mean, we know we have volume. I'm not hearing engines, wind. Yeah, do whatever you want, man. Shoot me. One, two. Don't keep clear to taxi to runway nine. Oh, what is? The reason behind that. So we have audio. We're hearing the voices. We're just not hearing engines or anything else. I got a threat behind me. So... Uh, trying to climb. I am blocked. And maybe I was shot. I don't know. Losing control. Yeah. So that's weird that I'm not getting uh, any uh, audio. Hey, I thought we were flying uh, MiGs. I don't know if that's you or not. Do 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 do. Oh no, really? It did it back me all the way out? Now let's see here. It did. Wasn't it M89? No. Really? I'm sorry about that. I somehow or another backed myself all the way out of the... Uh... Of the multiplayer. What is the name of the server again? M... Is it an M84? M89? Two eighty nine. Sorry. Two eight nine. So did you hit me with something? Because I I I I just fell out of the sky. Da, da, da. 18 minutes after the hour, close to the smoke break. Let me grab my coffee.
Come on, load faster, you bugger. You've done this once already. Thank you. That's where the clouds are all jacked up and moving around funny. And I'm getting tearing. It's unusual. Just install the latest driver. Everything should be fine. That don't look good at all. The refresh rates are jacked. Wow, weird. And I, I seem to be maybe just a spectator at the moment. I'm not really sure. I don't know what's going on. Here, it's like there's some band there. Uh, is there anything you need to click to do a respawn? A wax. How do you respawn and come out of spectator? Press escape and select roll.
I think I clicked on Hayes or Hans. And when I went in there, so it attached me as a spectator. So you have to click an unchecked box. Still don't have any audio. You're like in helmet. Отказ гидросистемы. See, hear that. Отказ гидросистемы. Отказ гидросистемы. Am I shot down again already? Отказ гидросистемы. Ah. Переведи в набор. Отказ гидросистемы. No, it's all right. I'm trying to figure out this audio issue. I mean, I can hear all the voices. It's just... Excuse me, my lord. But... Infield 3, engaging bandit at bullseye 2, 7, 9, for 100. There we go. Main audio out, speaker headphones. See, now I'm hearing my threat indicator. Okay. And I can see on my radar that he's right off our uh, port side. And we're locked on. And we were locked. And he's on our starboard side, just behind us. Still some. There's the missile incoming. There he goes. time for a smoke break this smoke break brought to you by the great green fleece even growers the orion sector block guild number 420 up a pass if you're stopping into the room today please say hello in the chat room just say hi that's all you got to say please and that way i can click on your name and it says go it gives me a go to channel option and I can easily go to your channel and subscribe to you 
and be able to check out whatever you're doing, gaming, politics, anything. You know me, I love talking about everything and talking crap about everything. So chances are whatever you're interested in, I might be interested in too. If you found your way to my station, yeah, we probably have at least one thing that we have in common. So I would love to subscribe to you and return the favor. Okay. So today my plan was to go over the uh, the weapon systems and try to learn a little bit more about them. So I know which weapons to, to use. You know, we have, uh, we don't, well, looks like we've only got We've only got a couple of rockets, two rockets and a cannon. So I don't know how to set the loadouts. So I wonder how you do set the load out. No, it's quite all right. Uh, is there a way to set load out or set unlimited weapons, or do we only have those missiles, uh, rockets, whatever they are? Uh, the rockets. That's cool. It's like an Aurora. In the sky, I'm kind of, well, no, that's just because I've got a graphic problem going on. I've got a square graphical box going on. That's 440 knots only. We shouldn't be having any problem. the cloud sorry about that if I got hit I'm not sure how or where I didn't hear anything didn't see anything didn't hear anything all right how do we Set up our loadout. Let's see if there's any instructions here. Oh, cool. You got frequencies. There's AWACS. Oh, cool. So you might be able to... You might be able to use these and tune into them. And use their... Satellite information. Defense Senekai from bombers from the east. I'm a submarine air starts for training bridge flyunders. Threats. Weather turbulence take off and departure one of nine. Hey, let me pause right there. I needed, to, I wanted to do a smoke break anyway. Let me hit escape. Hey, uh, pause, please. Uh, let me go back to briefing or crash, whatever. Let me just stop right there and look over in the chat room. Uh, model Junkers has shown up in the room today. Thank you. He's come in to let us know he's got a new vid up. So now he said something in the chat room. All I have to do is click on his name 
and it gives me a go-to channel option. And it's coming up right now. He's, there's one of his new models. Is there an active pause in this thing? Does autopilot not work? Or whatever. And <laughs> now what I don't want hear the simulator now I'm hearing it and uh, I just want to want to pause it or get to a spot where I don't have to hear it Let's see And you you think he would have got the message by now? You, I think he gets it. Can you stop spamming the radio? I'm trying to watch something here, man. Okay. What if what if I just minimize? Even with DCS World minimized. Well, that seemed to work. Okay, good. Pardon me a moment while I go over to models page. I bring up YouTube record window. Uh, I recommend you go over there yourself and click on it. Go to his channel, subscribe to him if you're into the model airplanes and that. 3D models and modeling of all kinds. Uh, look what this gentleman is up to, man. Those are beautiful. Look at the little Spitfire there. That I don't know which what model. I don't know. I mean, the Spitfire, Spitfire is so iconic that that one just stands out. So, not like I know shit about airplanes. That looks like a Spitfire 2. But the Allied version. That twin engine one is beautiful. Does anybody remember the airplane from Indiana Indiana Jones? The Raiders of the Lost Ark. Okay, in Raiders of the Lost Ark, right? Indiana Jones gets in a fight with this that huge, huge, huge German with the bald head, and they're fighting. Miriam is trapped in the cockpit of the plane, and Indiana Jones goes to try to rescue her, and the German says, ah, come on down here. We have to fight first, and there's that horrible, horrible fight and horrible ending for that German gentleman, uh, who was very honorable, by the way. Remember when he knocks Indiana Jones just on his ass? Well, he did it a couple of times, but just knocked him on his ass. And Indiana Jones is just all beat up. He's got his hand like, yeah, just give me a second. Just just give me a second. I'll be right up. Oh, man. That plane. It's just a giant wing. Has any does anybody know what kind of plane that is? I should just look it up. We got Google. All right. Okay. So model those are fantastic. Definitely an artist paint everywhere. 
on your cutting, on your self-healing cutting mat. Excellent. Let me like. And now, let me share that to my X page. I don't recommend going to my X page, my Twitter page, because I'm an asshole. And um, I'm everything else in the book. You'd probably want to call me. So, But I'm more than happy to put it out there as, hey, check this out. So I just shared it over to X. The plane with the big... Rundles? The plane with the big roundles is an air defense fighter, so it shoots bombers. Then the ones with the German cross are, are German. The Indiana Jones plane isn't real, model says, sadly. The closest to it is the HA-229, which is a jet. Wow. I always wondered, I mean, what a, what an amazing looking aircraft that was. And I do know that in the past, in our in aviation history, they absolutely had... Um, there are certain planes out there that were just a giant wings. I've, I've seen them. Okay. All right. Back to DCS World, and I put it on autopilot, and I hit level. Oh, it did pause. Or it froze. I've got an hourglass, and I'm not responding. Probably not good. Unless, I don't know if the match ends or... Not enough experience yet. Wow. You have been busy. Unless you had... Yeah, either way, you've been busy. Doesn't matter when you did them. Uh... Okay. All right. Awesome, awesome. All right. So just to get my bearing and let the other guys, they probably already know how to use uh, the satellite or maps or whatever to find me. But if not, I'm flying straight and level at... Three thousand nine hundred and twenty feet, doing six hundred and eighty knots, and I'm flying to waypoint nineteen. And uh, what waypoint are you, gentlemen, over? First, let's maybe we can not shoot each other for a minute, just kind of like find each other in a circle. You know. Let's see here. Alt C. You just bought the Tempest MK5, Mark 5. You have a German bomber plane. They've been painting a, a night sky. Do you have an airbrush? And, uh, Um, 
What's your waypoint number? Uh, I, I'll see if I can. I don't know how to pull up my map yet. That what well, you know that hasn't been in the training at all so far, surprisingly. Um, let's see about. I think it would be up in the F's. Yeah, there's F10. So F10, thank you for making me find my map, and I can help find you. Okay, I see some red flashes over here. This is me pointing, I bet this is me down here. Player Pontiac 21, of course, going off the map. All right, so now how do I find waypoints, the main waypoints? here filters show all routes targets detection areas yeah I was I was curious about um you know having them you know trying to get the it the paint to to look like metal you know so uh like a car, when you do a car, you know, they put on the gloss coat and then they wax. They buff that wax in real nice to protect the clear coat. Sure, 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 sure. Hmm. Got to jump out and then deselect your roll. Sakomi, Pontiac one one inbound. Pontiac one one, Sakomi, fly heading one two two four two one QFE two nine decimal four nine runway three zero. Jump out. Uh, this is DCS World. It's 
063. Request navigation assistance. 063. ADF, you're heading 159. Uh, yeah, to do everything that I'm doing so far. Um, yeah, the base game, you can download it, as I understand, for free. They say get it from the website there directly, um, and that way you have access to beta test or to try out a lot of other types of planes. I have Steam and didn't know that and just got it on Steam, so doesn't matter to me I'm I'm just trying to learn all the basics at the moment but if you start getting serious into this one and you want to buy planes they're they can be very very expensive up to a hundred dollars or more for a plane I just need to press fly he says all right Okay. Uh, waypoint one, seven point four three miles. Six is air to air combat. Uh, alt three is level and hold. To external view. I have two, looks like two rockets or missiles. There's some red smoke targets down there on the ground. Going F1 back to the cockpit. Okay, so now again, uh, now I have no waypoint selected. So one, no, six. So control in tilde. Nope. Alright, one again. Okay. That says waypoint one is. Okay. Zero nine or nine airborne. That dude had a cool voice. It sounds like my friend uh, Nam in Chicago. I hope my mic is not open. People are hearing me blab. Okay, so back to the map there. Mm -hmm. It looks like I'm back down here flying off the map again. Dogfight spawns. Let me turn back around. So, deactivate autopilot controls and head north. Alt 2 is an alt and roll hold. Got the hand off the joystick at the moment.
All right, Alt three heading north. We're yeah, and I don't know if I'm the Pontiac or not, but uh, yeah, I'm Pontiac twenty one. Pilot parachuting and coming to the ground over here by this TV tower. Six is air to air. Crossing into the uh, the dogfight zone, I guess. Yeah, what speed would you like? Uh, yeah, I'm going a bit fast. Alt 9, clear all autopilot controls. Alt 2, start a slow circle. Going down, do some flaps, or, or uh, flaps. Our air brakes, that'll slow us down. I can actually put flaps too, it slows down even more. 400, 480, 70, 60. Turn off the flaps, 440, 430. Turn off the air brakes, put the throttle back in. Four ten. Four hundred. And doing a circle. There you are. Knots doing a circle over the over the uh, zone here, the north side of the uh, zone. Zero nine four. Request startup. Let me go back towards the middle of it. 
094. Request takeoff. None. All right. Request startup. So heading towards the central TV towers. And then I'll start another circle. Pretty snazzy. Can't wait to learn a little bit more about this. Okay. 470. Slow down. Slow down. And start a small circle. Come on. All right, not a problem. Hey, at least we had a little bit of time and we got to try something today. Not the best day. It'll always, and as you know, it'll improve. You can only hope. All right, so you have a wonderful day. We're going to go ahead and leave the server. Yeah, it's it's pretty damn big. Yep. Uh also be aware if you do end up downloading it. Um and you if you have an antivirus active, there are two instances where your antivirus might trigger. One is a DLL. They've been doing this for 15 years, and I don't know why they haven't worked this out. It it pisses me off really badly. But because you want to play this, but yet at the same time, you're going to get some, you know. It stopped my download completely on me. It, it quarantined one of the DLLs, and then when a PDF was downloading, it shut down the download it wouldn't let the download proceed so you have to go in and turn off your antivirus completely to get the rest of the download which pissed me off then linked from their official forum pages to go find a keyboard map that I could put on another screen so I could have all the keyboard controls displayed on the screen I got the most wicked virus screen pop-up I've ever seen in my life. Your IP has been uh, used unwillingly. They're taking your identity. Don't shut your computer down. Call this number now. Don't shut down anything. Don't close this window. Big flashing lights and sirens and unbelievable that a website like that would be linked to their main forum bunch of bullshit ski buddy okay I've got to get um, a handle on these weapons Yeah, totally. I get it, man. Uh-huh. It's late, too. You know, thank you for staying up and uh, hooking up with me for a while. If you're available tomorrow, I'll try to get some sleep tonight, maybe, and, and uh, try to be on earlier, or at least be around, try to make myself available tomorrow.
In this lesson, we're going to learn how to deliver unguided bombs in the Continuously Computed Impact Point Mode, or CCIP. Unguided bombs of the SU-25T include the FAB-100, FAB-250, FAB-500, RBK cluster bombs, and beta penetration bombs. In this case, I have two racks of FAB-100s and a couple of larger FAB-500s. Each of the FAB bombs has a high explosive warhead and the number in the name indicates the bomb's weight in kilograms. I currently have the lesson in active pause. The first thing I need you to do is select air to ground mode by pressing 7. Do this now. Note that the HUD has changed. You can switch your weapons by pressing D. Try this now. When you cycle a weapon, take a look at the weapon status panel in the bottom center of the front dash. It's the black panel with the shape of a wing along the top. There are two rows of lights below it. The top row of yellow lights indicates the weapon stations that have weapons attached to them. And the lower row of green lights indicates weapon stations that are loaded with the currently selected weapon type. In the top right corner of the panel, a B symbol is displayed. This indicates that the selected weapon type is a bomb. You can also see the symbol in the lower right corner of the HUD. By pressing left control and spacebar, you can set the ripple quantity, meaning how many bombs are released when you press and hold the weapon release button or trigger. Try this now. As you cycle ripple quantity, take a look at the weapon control panel in the lower left portion of the front dash. On the panel are two knobs. The right knob has positions for X1, X2, X4, and BCE. The position of the knob determines how many bombs will be released, as singles, in pairs, four at a time, or all at once. You can set the release interval by pressing V. This determines the time between each bomb. Those are the basics of configuring your settings for bomb release. Now let's learn how to put those bombs on target in CCIP mode. Using what you learned in the navigation lessons, fly through all the gates ahead. Press the space bar to unpause the lesson. If you are not already, press 7 to enter air to ground mode. On the HUD, you can see a pipper with a dot in the center. This is your bombing reticle and will use it to aim your bombs. When you're within valid bomb release parameters, indicated by the launch authorization queue on the HUD, the bombs will impact where the bombing reticle pipper is at time of weapon release. Um, yeah, if you're thinking, man, the colors do look a little bit strange. I was cycling through and trying the different graphical options. Along the left side of the HUD is the range scale bar and carrot that indicates the bomb fall range. Uh, and this is Technicolor 1. Bottom left corner of the HUD, IP ground is indicated, meaning visual bombing mode is selected. The B in the bottom right corner of the HUD indicates you have bomb selected. All right. Okay. So this is in Russian, right? So he says. You know, there's going to be a B in the corner, and it looks like a 6 in the corner. And then he says, so, you know, when you're playing with this, um, I'm having to take notes. Because he says, the B in the bottom right corner of the HUD indicates you have bomb selected. In the bottom left corner of the HUD, IPGND is indicated, meaning you have visual bombing mode selected. See, I don't see IPGND. I see some Cyrillic, that's the way, or Russian, whatever, 
and I see O N T. He didn't. He told me that we're using two types of bombs: the fab bombs, and I think he said one hundred and five hundred. And um, helos, I think. Okay, so O N T. is visual bombing mode. So if there is an American version of this that has the American cockpit, I don't know. But he he reads everything out and every every instruction he gives he uh it says it in English and then again the what's on the screen is different anyway visual bombing mode I have a notepad here i definitely rent recommend having a notepad i wouldn't recommend trying to go out and grab anybody's charts or lists because of what i've encountered just better to do it yourself okay Ah, oh, I missed it. Ah, oh, son of a gun. If you if you miss a gate, it's unforgiving. You failed. You have to quit. Then fly again. Yeah, it's brutal. It is brutal, especially when you've made it and you screw up the last gate. Ah, oh. and then some of these missions, you can press the space bar to advance the uh, the instructor, but in some of them, it does not. It's like no, you're gonna hear everything I have to say, and those tend to be really long. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to deliver unguided bombs in the Continuously Computed Impact Point Mode, or CCIP. Unguided bombs of the SU-25T include the FAB-100, FAB-250, FAB-500, RBK cluster bombs... Oh, that's not a problem. I thought you had left already. My bad. In this case, I have two um, of FAB yeah, I understand. ...and a couple of larger well, FAB-500s. Each of the FAB bombs has a high-explosive warhead and the number in the name indicates the bomb's weight in kilograms. I currently have the lesson in active pause. The first thing I need you to do is select air to ground mode by pressing seven. Do this now. Note that the HUD has changed to remove most of the navigation information and replace it with bombing symbology. We'll talk more about this soon. You can switch your weapons by pressing D. Try this now. When you cycle a weapon, Take a look at the weapon status panel in the bottom center of the front dash. Okay, did that. A panel with the shape of a wing along the top. There are two rows of lights below it. Yep, got that. The top row of yellow lights indicates the weapon stations that have weapons attached to them. And the lower row of green lights indicates weapon stations that are loaded with the currently selected weapon type. In the top right corner of the panel, a B symbol is displayed. This indicates that the selected weapon type is a bomb. You can also see the symbol in the lower right corner of the HUD. By pressing left control and spacebar, you can set the ripple quantity, meaning how many bombs are released when you press and hold the weapon release button or trigger. And that's these two knobs over here. As you cycle ripple quantity, take a look at the weapon control panel in the lower left portion of the And V does the other one. On the panel, or those are the basics configuring your settings for bomb release. Now let's learn how to put those bombs on target in CCIP mode. Using what you learned in the navigation lessons, fly through all the gates ahead. Press the space Freaking button mouse. and pause the lesson. So, back to seven. Uh, and what I did wrong was I didn't have enough power in general. If you are not already, press seven to enter air to ground mode. So you'll want to keep your speed up. On the HUD, you can see a pipper with a dot in the center. This is your bombing reticle and will use it to aim your bombs. 
when you're within valid bomb release parameters indicated by the launch authorization queue on the HUD, the bombs will impact where the bombing reticle pipper is at time of weapon release. Hey, if you're stopping by to check out the live stream today, please stay high. Don't be a stranger, for On the one. The side of the HUD is the range scale bar in carrot that indicates the bomb fall range. But when you click into the chat room and say anything, it allows me to click on your name, and it gives me an easy go-to channel option in which I can immediately pull up your channel and the subscribe. The ground is indicated, meaning visual bombing mode is selected. The B in the bottom right corner of the HUD indicates you have bomb selected. So, if you need any new subscribers, uh, hey, I'm more than happy to. So, don't be a stranger, say hi. Ahead and below your nose is a set of trucks marked with red smoke. This will be hey, your cool. Aim. Cheers. You fly to the next gate, quickly begin a dive onto the target. Uh, I've been doing the flight simulator stuff so long, this is so, uh, it's a lot to learn and, uh, It's been very difficult. <laughs> Dive now to an angle of 50 to 60 degrees as indicated on the HUD pitch scale. Maneuver the aircraft to place the bombing reticle paper over the targets yeah. with the red smoke. When a line is drawn from the top of the bombing reticle and an LA appears at the bottom of the HUD, release your bombs by LA. the space bar. Control your airspeed by reducing throttle and pressing B oh pull up oh pull up I got caught by my own bombs I don't think I hit anything nope 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 so on the cover art in the title today I said uh, I was doing training but I also put you know, expect a lot of failures, uh, a lot of fails. Same with last night. Failure after failure after failure. But I'll get it. We'll get it. We'll learn how to fly these things. So it's very challenging. Very, very challenging. The, uh, the navigation, which I love. I love navigation. Completely messed me up. And, uh... I had to go watch some videos. It, it, it's an inertial navigation system, which is different in some ways. Uh, I just didn't get what the instructor was saying right off the bat. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to deliver. Oh, well, I'm gonna while I'm doing this, let me let me quit because uh, the colors might be throwing people off. It is a little bit weird, but I've been exploring the different visualizations you can do. So from the main menu, up at the top here under settings, I also wanted to see if I can clean up the cockpit a bit. Okay, the textures I want high. Rain textures, let's turn those on. And the aliasing, MSAA. can't do DLSS. I think there's a control in my AMD to go up to super virtual resolution, but I'm not going to mess with that now. Water, we it doesn't matter. Clouds, it's always nice when they're high. But you can do Ultron clouds. Well, it's at least too high. Super sampling, turn it on. Super sampling, I don't know what LR is, but let's try turning it on. We don't need any lens effects. Keep blur is cool, but not necessary. Motion blur off, depth of field on. I don't know what bokeh is, but we'll go to simple. Color grading, this is where I changed the color. Color grading, Technicolor 1. So I was working my way 
I'm skipping teals and orange, red tints, blue tints, sepia. I tried Cinecolor, that was ugly. Uh, let's just go back to not used. Over here, forest visibility. Uh, don't really need that much. Forest details factor, I don't really care. Scenery, uh, I don't know. Too many smoke density. It's not a big deal to me. Gamma's fine. You can change your external field of view, and that's probably good when you have multiple monitors and stuff. We don't need that much FPS. V sync on, rain droplets on. It's going to restart the, um, it, yeah, I'm going to say, wouldn't uh, you make that many changes? It just shuts it down and it'll restart here in a second. All right. That, it, and that's exactly 20 minutes after the hour, so that worked out perfectly. Okay, let me switch over here to messages. Put us in a be right back mode. It is time for the smoke break. This smoke break brought to you by the great green fleecing rows of the Orion Sector Block Yield number 420. Smoke if you got them. It's always a smoker friendly, always smoker friendly flights on my flights. So, yeah. Puff, puff, pass. And we'll play Brad Sucks out of it again while this is reloading. Today's song, today's feature song, Brad Sucks out of it. And a lot of us have been. Maybe still are. You'll feel this one. In my place where I am found, I'm still amazed that you're not around. I know, I know that it's a blessing to be a man who can't pay attention to my If you hear any coughing, don't be distressed. I've got so much time to take it 
easy now that I am on my own. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to deliver unguided bombs. Uh, and continue to I need to pause right there. Borderline's going to start playing. I need to quickly jump screens again. Uno momento. Featured this one a couple of days ago. Borderline. Good stuff. Use that for Star Trek podcasting. Uh, if you need music for your, if you need music like that, and you're doing your own live streams, or you, either way, uh, and you like Brad's music and would like to use any of his music in your live stream, then please, uh, by all means, like and subscribe. Brad sucks, just like it sounds, B-R-A-D-S-U-C-K-S. Brad sucks, which he doesn't. I don't want to get into that. Um, tell him Kenny has sent you. Tell him you love his stuff. And um, is it okay if you use any of his music in your live streams? Once you get monetized, he'll have the option to, well, he might have the option to select share. And he other that's it. It's good. No copyright problems. Nothing. He just hits a, a share button, or he'll okay it. If you're not monetized, probably. I wouldn't think that he's so hoity-toity mighty now that he wouldn't. Fantastic gentleman, and an amazing, amazing artist. Computed impact point mode, or CCIP. Unguided bombs of this team are being hit cluster bombs and beta penetration bombs. In this case, I have two racks of Fab 100s and a couple of larger Fab 500s. Each of the Fab bombs has a high explosive warhead, and the number in the name indicates the bomb's weight in kilograms. I currently have the lesson in active pause. The first thing I need you to do is select air to ground mode by pressing seven. Do this now. All right, I will. But as soon as I move towards the plane, the engines are so loud. I'm gonna have to tweak audio again. But so he's, we've got two different types of payloads: some Fab 100s and some Fab 500s. And let's look at those now. Seven. Air to ground HUD. Note that the HUD has changed to remove most of the navigation information and replace. Sorry. So let's see if we can turn down the environment now. If that's working, we can turn up the volume and we can turn up the helmet and. That should turn up the instructor. Don't, uh, yeah, helmet. Don't want any music. Um, they say you'll you'll never hear your switches. <laughs> like, is the sound in the simulator authentic switch noise? And the answer I'm hearing most often is, dude, come on, I can't hear anything in the cockpit. Yeah, okay. Okay, well, let's see if that did work properly and we can hear the gentleman better. ...with bombing symbology. Yeah. We'll talk more about this soon. You can switch your weapons by pressing D. Try this now. Okay. Down here, again, shows what we see outside the yellow lights, the weapons and their positions. D, the green lights show which ones are active, so the, the two on the outside. If I hit the D key, that's what he's talking about. Take a look at the weapon status panel in the bottom center of the front dash. 
It's a black panel with the shape of a wing along the top. There are two rows of lights below it. The top row of yellow lights indicates the weapon stations that Space have... Spacebar. Try to speed them up. And the lower row of green lights indicates weapon stations that are loaded nope. with the currently selected weapon type. In the top right corner of the panel, a B symbol is displayed. Looks it's like a six. That the selected weapon type is a bomb. You can also see the symbol in the lower right corner of the HUD. Lower right corner of the HUD. Looks like a six. Set the ripple quantity, meaning how many bombs are released when you press and hold the weapon release button or trigger. Try this now. Number of bombs dropped. Control space. Control space. Control space. Take a look at the weapon control panel in the lower left portion of the front dash. On the panel are two knobs. The right knob has positions for X1, X2, X4, and B. Those are the basics of configuring your settings for bomb release. Now let's learn how to put those bombs on target in CCIP mode. Okay. Using what you learned in the navigation lessons, fly through all the gates ahead. Press the space bar to unpause the lesson. Okay. So... Okay, the group that I'm going to come up on, the first group anyway, they're all clustered together. So, you know, you might want to get Alt-C if I have a cursor. You know, you might want to drop, all, drop them all, or if you miss, like I did the first time, maybe just drop half of them. So, it all depends on what you want to do. Uh, and then the interval, the timing. Some people are saying, in other videos that I've watched, to be about 0.3. I, I haven't gotten my head all around this yet. But what I do know is, the, one of the later training missions, there's a convoy... All right, so there is intervals between them. So a convoy of trucks, you might want to think about something like that. That's the way I'm guessing. That's my best guess. Right? So if it's just a quick little short run, pardon, like we're going to dump everything on them, to me... Um, I think that's dump everything on them, or this one is just dump everything on them. By the way, I don't need a, a fast or a, a delayed interval. Just drop them. And over here, uh... So there, we'll drop... If there's more than one, if you could drop more than one, we're dropped dropping half, I guess. Okay. Alt-C releases the cursor. Very different from Microsoft Flight Simulator, so I'm going to be talking through it. Okay. And we switch back out of air to ground mode, so number seven. We want to see that. That. I'm still trying to get my head around, you know, the distance to drop target. And uh, he says when you're, when you're getting close to the target, line it up, get your pointer, your circle, to develop a horizontal line, hold it there until you get another signal on the HUD. So, in the order of things, you're putting your circle on the target. You're trying to keep an eye on that arrow on the left-hand side of the screen. And somewhere right in here, in the same area as that arrow comes down, you're supposed to get another display. And that's when you press the space bar. If 
you are not already, press 7 to enter air to ground mode. Mistake earlier again was HUD, going too slow. With a dot in the center. This is your bombing reticle and we'll use it to aim your bombs. When you're within valid bomb release parameters, indicated by the launch authorization queue on the HUD, the bombs will impact where the bombing reticle pipper is at time of weapon release. Autopilot features are really neat. I really like it. I wish Along we. On the left side of the HUD is the range scale bar and carrot that indicates the bomb fall range. Okay, a carrot, bomb fall range. In the bottom left corner of the HUD, IP ground is indicated, meaning visual bombing mode is selected. B in the bottom right corner of the HUD indicates you have bomb selected. Now again, GND looks like ONT. So I've written that down in my notepad. Ahead and below your nose is a set of trucks marked with red smoke. This will be your aim point. When you fly to the next gate, quickly begin a dive onto the target. He should have told you to slow down because then right when you're in a dive and you're like your maximum stress, then he's like, hey, by the way, um, so I'm doing air brakes I'm gonna even do flaps dive now to an angle of 50 to 60 degrees as indicated on the HUD pitch scale maneuver the aircraft to place the bombing reticle paper over the targets marked with the red smoke when a so negative on 60 top of the bombing reticle and an LA appears at the bottom of the HUD I don't see an LA by pressing the space bar Control your airspeed by reducing throttle and pressing B to deploy your air brakes. Yeah, I, I think we... I think I dove too hard or remained and dived too hard and... I think I blew myself up with my own munitions. Ain't that something? Crazy. All right, one more time and we'll move on. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to deliver unguided bombs in the continuously computed impact. Seven spacebar. No Try to get him to move on. To remove most of the navigation information and replace it with bombing symbology. D. When you cycle spacebar. Take a look at the weapon status panel in the bottom center of the front dash. It's the black panel with the shape of a wing along the top. There are two rows of lights below it. The Left control spacebar. Weapon spacebar. Have weapons attached to them. In the lower row of green lines indicates weapon stations that are loaded with the currently selected weapon type. No, they won't move on. In the top right corner of the panel, a B symbol is displayed. This indicates that the selected weapon type is a bomb. You can also see the symbol in the lower right corner of the HUD. By pressing left control and spacebar, you can set the ripple quantity, meaning how many bombs are released when you press and hold the weapon release button or trigger. Try this now. As you cycle ripple quantity, take a look at the weapon control panel in the lower left portion of the... Those are the basics of configuring your settings for bomb release. Now let's learn how to put those bombs on target in CCIP mode. Using what you learned in the navigation lessons, fly through all the gates ahead. Press the space bar to unpause the lesson. If you are not already, press 7 to enter air to ground mode. HUD, you can see a pipper with a dot in the center. This is your bombing reticle and we'll use it to aim your bombs. When you're within valid bomb release parameters, indicated by the launch authorization queue on the HUD, the 
bombs will impact where the bombing reticle pipper is at time of weapon release. Sixty degree dive feels like a ninety degree dive, and I've been like, oh, "You're kidding me!" And um, definitely keep an eye on the. Uh, Along the left side of the HUD is the range scale bar and carrot that indicates the bomb fall range. The altimeter on your HUD when you're in the dive to make sure you you push it all the way down to sixty. The bottom left corner of the HUD, IP ground is indicated, meaning visual bombing mode is selected. The B in the bottom right corner of the HUD indicates you have bombs selected. OMT. Ahead and below your nose is a set of trucks. We start slowing down speed. now. This will be your aim point. When you fly to the next gate, quickly begin a dive onto the target. I don't want to bleed off speed too fast and uh, not be able to get to the gate, but I want to slow down for sure. There, speed brake. Dive. Dive now. To dive, DiMaggio, dive. 60 degrees is indicated on the HUD pitch scale. Maneuver the aircraft okay. and place the bombing reticle paper over the targets marked with the red smoke. When a line is drawn from the top of the bombing reticle and an LA appears at the bottom of the HUD, Release your bombs by pressing the space bar. Control your airspeed by reducing throttle and pressing B to deploy your air brakes. I don't believe we hit a thing. Back to up to 2,000 feet. Thank you. Oh, remember to put your power back on. You turn the flaps on and speed brakes on. Make sure you turn them off. Sorry, right, trying to build up some speed. Low. All right. Alt two. Let's try alt hold and with a roll, and have a look. All right, they're back there. If you don't like flying in circles. And in any way that makes you nervous, you're not going to enjoy this. I don't like flying in circles. So it behooves me to try to learn how to do this stuff properly. So I don't have to keep doing circles. But man, trying to do, I'm gonna get to it, I'm gonna go back to it soon. It's the um, target practice range. And there you will quickly understand. Uh, understand? <laughs> understand. How you're going to be in perpetual circle hell. Yeah, I'm going to start slowing down again. Air brakes. Make sure I'm in seven still, yeah. Oh. All right, we gotta get that pip up. Oh, shit. Lost my pitch angle.
You know, that's what uh, Henny said too. Trying War Thunder. Right this way. Oh, these are the ones you do an X over. Flaps. <laughs> I, I tried getting rid of the canopy and ejecting, and I just wasn't fast enough. Turned myself into jelly as it was blowing up. Warp Thunder is a grind, too. Yeah, until you become zen with the uh, DCS world. You know, there's that point, man, after a while. Eventually, if you stick with it, it'll click. It was the same way for flying in general for me uh, in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I wanted to learn. I wanted to learn so badly. And it was so difficult that I quit over and over and over again. But there came a point where it's like, ah, ah, I get it. Oh, ah, ooh. And the, the breakthrough started happening. Wow, I can actually land now. Took me two years. That's my favorite story to tell. Took me two years to get over my fear of landing in a simulator. How stupid is that? But I couldn't stick a landing. Night. Whether it was the computer I was using, just... Uh, not being able to see the ground properly. So instant action, target practice. So this is the one where I don't have enough information doing the training missions to really fully understand what everything is. And then it's all in Russian. So I'm going to have to end up spending a lot of time looking over the specifications of every one of these things. I don't mind, but it's like going back to college, Jack, Joe, model. Okay. Ahead of you at Waypoint One is an island with an assortment of target types. Each target group is marked with red smoke. You have a wide array of weapons to choose from to destroy as many units as you can. Press escape. Before we do that. All right, so. I know we've got a cannon. But I have no idea. What I'm going, you know, being able to fly in on things and being able to, one, identify things. Everything's like little tiny ants. It's so hard. You need bionic eyes. And being able to just visually identify everything before you hit the ground, it, that's very difficult. And then knowing the right one of these to pick. Right now, it's just... We I'm gonna push buttons and I'm going to disgorge ourselves of all of this all these munitions, but that's about the extent of it. I I 
you know, probably a good idea that we maybe just fly in and I think these guys shoot at you too. Just that's fair. Okay, so I can't really get a good zoom, and I don't know enough about the see moving around. So if there is a way to get information on this, these, uh, the territory, let's see about F10. We have this cool map, but no, no information about troops. F11, nothing. All right. Now, I wonder if we can cycle through these guys. This was F6. And I see a guy in a, in a tank. Can I move around him? Oh, that's nice. Good. And he's in the target zone with the red smoke. So you can get some information. But, and which munitions are going to work best? Like, I don't know which ones are armor piercing and best for tanks. So all, all tanks over here. So going back to the interval thing, like if you're dropping bombs and you're doing a strafing run, but right now it's all just talking theory in my head. Uh... about the spacing you'd need, like the timing now, how much, how much ground are you covering and moving? Uh, how fast are you moving to, and then setting the right spacing and timing? That's crazy stuff, man. So not only do you have to know all this stuff, you have to be like super brainiac. Oh, I'm going to have to set uh, three seconds worth of spacing right here, or 0.03 seconds of spacing to get this guy and these, these two guys, and that guy in a run. Bomb, bomb, bomb. So, uh... Alright. So what do we know? We know that right now, that weapon... The second weapon in on that wing it looks like that um, missile pod right that's a like cluster bomb so let's say if, if we run into the tanks, maybe that's not it. Best guess. So, pardon me. Golden, I'm getting kind of stuffy in here. I've got to make game. There we go. Uh, D. That was the next target. But we're paused. Will it let me? Un unpause D. Okay. Now we're on the third end from each wing. So just like bomb. We've got two of them. That's different from that side, isn't it? No, they're the same. So those look like pod rockets. I I don't know at the moment. And it looks like they might have guidance on them. And then it looks like we have 
I don't know if the air to ground or if you can use those for air to air as well. Okay. So we've got two bombs. Let's let's just leave it at those two bombs that are set right there. Oh, I think those four tanks were them. And then you need to be able to read these things. BMP one, BMP one, BMP one, GA, GA, GA. I'll bet you. I wonder if these guys are the tanks. The T five fives. There's four of them. All right, let's go back to F six real quick, if it'll let me. Now, is there a way to cycle? I can see. I can keep doing that, yeah. So I'm wrong. We're over here. Right? It looks kind of like that to us. All right, so there's our four over there. Now what? I could cycle between them, or I'll have to see if there's a way to do that at some point. I don't see what they are. Ah, there's something over here. Can't really make them out though. Unit, unit one oh unit ten, thirteen, unit eleven. So maybe the jeeps and the tr and the carriers. Uh, units, units. A unit for the mall. All right, then, so we go for those four. From our direction. a list of useful key commands. How do we get our...
Uh, do they drop? Maybe hit she up. Right. Right, absolutely. I'll be more careful this time. Do we have any more? Was that it? Oh, that, uh... Now it's the pod weapons? Until you get a better performing plane, training on this one, since it's free, I mean, you really kind of have no choice. Um, but having a plane that can burn a lot better, that would be really nice. I'm sure there's some magic, magic tricks to this one. seem to be getting any horizontal lines, so I'm going to see about locking it on this way. Nothing.
This is really laggy. Do, 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 do. Where are we at? 4.06 in the afternoon here. And just practicing, if you're just tuning in, just practicing uh, the very, 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 very basics of DCS world. So Microsoft, at the moment, it still holds the stance that there will be no combat in Microsoft Flight Simulator, and I am just so put out by that. I'm going to get to use strong words. I just hate it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's you know, uh, one of those. It's not a hate, it's just... Uh, uh. Something like that. Um... And I don't get it. And the real, uh, the people in the community over there are like, go play D DCS World. And I'm like, I don't, I don't want DCS World. Uh, I love my simulator. It's the greatest simulator that mortal man outside of like the elites and military and whatever. For us, for us mortal humans. It's the greatest simulator ever to exist. With the greatest developers I've ever witnessed in my life. And it can do things that people just, when they wanted a new simulator, they never even asked for. Holy crap, it can do that, it can do that, yep. So I'm mad because, yeah, uh, I want them to bring back, since they brought back the simulator in general, even if you release them as, again, like DLCs, the Pacific Combat Simulator was freaking amazing. But just have a, zones that people can then use their stuff in, or I don't know uh, how to do it, just bring it back. Early on in the uh, development phase, in the alpha and beta, there was always pages of information in the options to set up weapons, but, but we didn't have any, but they existed. So at its inception, it had it all built into it. Now with 2024, I don't know what they're going to do, how they're gonna, if they're going to continue with that or not. But I would rather, I would much rather be using MSFS for doing this. But, you know. And I'm wondering why after 15 years, they haven't, these people haven't announced, we made a new one? 15 years. Okay. Anti-radar missile practice. Uh, what about... Dogfighting. Presence. Had a problem with this one last night. My uh, night vision doesn't look like anybody else's that I've seen in training videos. My night vision just didn't work. Or I had, didn't turn it on right, or I could never get it to work. It wouldn't display anything but black. Eleven minutes after the hour. Okay. 
eight kilometers directly ahead are two 810 Warthogs. Okay, so I know what they are. Use your R60M. Write this down. Get my notepad. So we had in that first, that first training, that was, the, those were the fab bombs. This is a R60M. And R73. Missiles. Air to air mode is six. Next weapon is D. Toggle maneuver flaps F. External view. From U to target. Targets. All right. Shoot down both A tens. The altimeter is two nine six nine. I don't know how to do it in the SU. Eight kilometers ahead are two A-10s coming directly at you. Use your R-60M and R-73 missiles to shoot them down. Press escape and then select briefing to view a list of useful key commands. Throw out some paper flares. Blackout, pulling too many G's, sir. I was coming down that turbulence really threw me started blacking out and then couldn't control anything and started losing control couldn't bring her back to stable If you're in a country music, you probably already know this. I don't know how old it is. I didn't tech check the year on the release. But Chris Stapleton's What Are You Listening To? Is a friend of mine turned me on to it. I just said, here, listen to this. What do you think? Freaking amazing. I, I only ever heard him sing the national anthem. And I thought, yeah, that guy did a great job. Eight kilometers ahead are two A-10s coming directly at you. Use your R-60M and R-73 missiles to shoot them down. Press escape and then select briefing to view a list of useful key commands.
1500 килограмм. He's dropping more stuff. Cool. Ah, here they come. Oh, they got one of my engines, sir. Отказ гидросистемы. Отказ СПО. Отказ систем РЭП. He's lighting me up. Great. Отказ СПО. Отказ систем РЭП. There he goes. Flying in front of me. Отказ СПО. Where's he at? Отказ систем РЭП. Отказ гидросистемы. Отказ СПО. I heard you. I heard you. I heard you. She's mad. She's reading me the riot act. too loud now. Uh, lost control. There's a fight another day. Kilometers ahead are two A-10s coming directly at you. Use your R-60M and R-73 missiles to shoot them down. Press escape and then select briefy to view a list of useful key commands. Oh, I see. Trying to get it to hold autopilot up 
autopilot, auto hold, roll, alt. Being stubborn. There she goes. Nine, clear the autopilot spray. Put the nose down. Biting me. Come on. On trim, drifting. that nose down again. Speeding up. I think we need to be at eight? Question mark. Come on, nose. Out of that weapon. Not getting a tone this time.
got me, sir. I was hopeful for a moment. Then they hit the brakes and spun underneath me. I closed in too fast. Not that I didn't close in too not that I closed in too fast. It's just that as I got closer, I didn't drop enough speed to stay eight. I don't know why or we didn't get any tones. I was flipping back between the different weapons. So uh, the first one we got a tone. Where are we at? 27 minutes after the hour. You know what that means? We missed the smoke break at the 20 minute mark. This uh, belated smoke break brought to you by the Great Green Fleece. Some grows the Orion Sector Block Guild number 420. I'm sticking to it. Smoke, you got him. Always smoker friendly flying on Kin Airways. You're the VIP, man. Just crack a window. These things have great ventilation. Eight kilometers ahead are two A-10s coming directly at you. Use your R-60M and R-73 missiles to shoot them down. Press escape and then select briefing to view a list of useful key commands. Oh, I'm doing it again. He's in control. I really need to get one of those Toby eye, tr eye trackers, head tracker things. Crazy. Eight kilometers ahead are two A-10s coming directly at you. Use your R-60M and R-73 missiles to shoot them down. Press escape and then select briefing to view a list of useful key commands. Предельный угол атаки. Предельная перегрузка. 
Предельный угол атаки. Предельный угол атаки. I know, disorienting as a... What's going on? I don't see where they went. Ah, there's one.
Предельный угол атаки. Предельная перегрузка. Предельный угол атаки. Предельная перегрузка. to see those. Even on my side. Gear down. Oh, 
Oh my goodness, he had enough of us. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. Well done, AI. We didn't, I didn't even want, wow. I was going to try to eject. I figured we'd have way to the ground. A little bit more time uh, is what I mean. And no, no. And there he is, the superstar. Da, da, da. Now look at those badass flaps that he's got. I have flap envy right now. Wicked flap envy. Uh, all right, let's try something else. I have to come back to it, just you know, okay, just keep doing them over and over and over again. Oh, try that one. Close air support, easy. That sounds like something we can maybe do. Do, 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 do. Take off and departure frequencies two nine seven three and altimeter. I don't know how to set. Okay, at waypoint one on the east side of the river. There are four enemy armor vehicles that are blocking our troops from pushing south. The enemy force is marked with red smoke. This is your primary target. Southeast of the town they are defending. Uh, southeast of the town they are defending is a battery of four artillery pieces, also marked with red. Your secondary target. Once objectives are cleared, friendly forces will advance southeast. Southeast. So, four enemy armor vehicles on the east side of the river. Our guys are north of that, pushing south. Something like that. Southeast of them. East. Yeah. Four artillery pieces. Straight targets. So it doesn't uh, tell us what our loadout is. So again, now why well, we have to keep going back through the some of the other training. I don't know what these weapons are. Yep. We have to go back to basic, basic training again. Go through these. Okay, so in the first one, Fab Bombs 100, 500. That one, R60s, uh, and R73 missiles plus the cannon. Okay. 
Okay, so we do have bombs. We gotta use the ripple quantity thing. In the previous lesson, we learned how to put bombs on target using CCIP mode. In this lesson, we'll learn how to do it using the continuously computed release point mode, or CCRP. Whereas CCIP mode required us to place the bombing reticle on the target at time of weapon release, CCRP mode will allow us to drop a bomb on target even when the target is no longer in view. As before, fly through all the gates ahead. and enter air to ground mode by pressing 7. When in CCRP mode, the bomb release setting options are the same as we reviewed in CCIP mode. This includes both quantity and interval settings. flying through the gates to reach the target. Directly ahead by the lake shore is the target marked with red smoke. Fly to place the pipper in the center of the bombing reticle over the target and press and hold the weapon release trigger or spacebar. When designating for release of multiple bombs at once, it's best to aim slightly ahead of the target, such that the stick of bombs straddle the target. As you hold down the weapon release trigger over the target, you'll notice a green diamond over the target. This marks it as a designation point for a CCRP release. As you approach the target, keep flying through the gates, but keep the pipper aligned with the vertical line at the top of the pitch and bank angle indicator in the center of the HUD. Continue holding down their weapon release trigger. It says fly through the gates, but when I pull up, I get a X across my diamond. Release point. The time to release indication on the left side of the HUD descends, and the release tone is heard shortly before the bombs are released. So close, but yet so far. So this is CCRP. And CCRP, you press and hold. Press and hold fire. This thing uh, can turn very, very slow. It 
that you want to give yourself enough time going back around. It's hard to see him with all the blueprint. Nice job, you hit the target. I've added some additional targets more for the green smoke to practice on. You can continue to practice, or you can end the lesson now by pressing the escape key. I'm clear that. Alt three, a little out. Dang it, dang it. Try the next group. Dang it, now pulling the going too fast. Son of a gun.
Well, we got one. I am just starting out in DCE. Man, I'm just now seeing it. Thank you for spamming the hearts. And uh, let, me, let me pause here. Uh, WTC120. Hang on right there. Thank you so much, man. Or madam or entity. Um, But now, because you're doing that, I can see you. And I can go to your channel. I have a button here that just allows me to go right to it. And subscribe. And you say, hey, I post random stuff. I am subscribed. And anytime you post random stuff, I should be able to see it. And... I will check it out, and if I don't see it, and you notice that you posted something, and hey, I haven't got a like from that uh, that Kinius guy like thing, um, then pop in and tell me you have, and I'll I'll go check it out and throw some likes on it and share it out. Oh yeah, absolutely. I look forward to. Hey, thank you. Hey, yeah, thank you. Yes. Just starting out uh, in the DCS world. I played with the, the missions, but I haven't, I didn't really progress any further than I am right now. So I played it five years ago or so. Since then, I've been just playing in Microsoft Flight Simulator primarily. But, uh, yeah. No, I feel like I am uh, nothing but a big embarrassment. But I, man, I I appreciate it, yeah, Madam or Entity. I'm really looking forward to be able to say, oh yeah, yeah, that's one of those down there, and I'm uh, going to need this particular munition, uh, and approach from this, you know. That'd be nice. Ah. He's flying a blah, 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 blah. I'm going to need this particular loadout. And be traveling at 800 feet per, you know, 800 uh, knots. I have a, just a basic joystick with Sidewinder. Lost it. I didn't get a lock. Did I switch? Five o'clock in the afternoon on uh, a snowy Saturday here in Colorado. A little bit chilly in the room, but nice, even nice. All I'm missing is a, a traditional fireplace. That would make me happy. Um, and yeah, this is a, this is a blast. Uh, it would be nice to play with the big dogs doing something like this. I'm surprised that after 15 years, I don't know um, if they've talked about it or what the community is saying about it, but when is the next one coming out? Like, this is great. It's still freaking fantastic, and there's a lot for me to learn, and it's going to probably take me several years. Um, but it is 15 years old now. 
boat. When is the next one coming out? I need reasons to talk myself into getting like NVIDIA 4090 or I did it again. I wasn't happy with my lock. I thought I could maybe get another one. And I blew it. Not uh oh I I, I can bleep, bleep, bleep. <laughs> in the chat room WTC twelve twenty is saying that uh, doesn't know if another one will come out but you know because of secret documents and this and that and this oh that I completely understand I just mean one that is like everything is way more high definition. Just graphically, I guess. Um, and maybe, you know, new, you know, easier interfaces, easier to skip training missions. Um, maybe easier interface moving around the cockpit, maybe something a little bit more like Microsoft Flight Simulator where you can. quickly move around, change views, a little bit different. There's a lot I don't know about this still, but... Um, just, an up, just an upgrade. Nothing out of the ordinary for classified aircraft. Plasma. Tesla plasma vehicles. Documents on the Aurora. Or what are the ones now that are the uh, the triangle ones? The, I can't think of the name now.
That'll maybe straddle. You got one, hit one for 43 and one for 37. Yeah, they've got that photogrammetry technology that Microsoft Flight Simulator is using to wear... Um, it, uh, there's all kinds of stuff they've got going on with that one. LiDAR, radar, satellite, and then photogrammetry on top of that. Live weather. Seasons. I mean, yeah. Again, I, I, I don't know this community. I don't know this title very well. I don't know how many people are still doing campaign building and, you know, uh, mission building, but, you know... Possibly for those folks, you know, expanded tools and go crazy and do terraforming and, you know, all the crazy things that are possible now with, uh, with today's stuff. Doing. Speaking of upgrades and uh, new new releases, Microsoft Asobo uh, decided that all the things that we were asking for for the, uh, yeah for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 it was it wasn't possible with the old engine. So they just they just decided to. Re rewrite it from the ground up and re-release uh, probably in August um, Flight Simulator 2024 and they said that's going to have some crazy stuff one of the things that's been a big deal is uh, it's such a chunk memory wise and so the optimizations that they're going to be able to make and make it more net friendly and make it part of a cloud thin client kind of thing they're going to try to reduce all the download times loading times graphics I guess in I don't know how the whole world will be but they're talking about certain areas that'll be super 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 high resolution the possibility that you might be able to drive around for ground missions I don't know the full extent of what they're going to do but the rumors are is just crazy crap and I believe them Asobo is I've never really seen a development company like them. They're just so over-the-top, professional geniuses. They've managed to do the Flight Simulator 2020 is nothing but mind-boggling.
If I had to get one jet, what would it be? Can it be one that is not released yet? Or if it is, I, again, I don't know what's available at the moment. Um, other than the ones that are currently available as DLCs on the Steam official page. If there are other markets that you can buy planes from, I don't know about them. But if it exists, the F-35. If that's not available, the F-22. One, I want to be able to turn. And, man, I get dizzy. And because I suck, I spend so much time spinning in circles. And I hate spinning in circles. <laughs> I really do. It's annoying. And so, it would, again, it would be nice to be able to do a lot of this stuff and get it right the first time, go in and do, kill what you got to kill, and not have to sit there and spend your whole day doing circles. It's like gliding, same kind of thing. Oh my god, I'm just spinning in circles. Same with racing. Oh my god. God, I'm just spinning in circles, but really, really fast. So the... That's my thoughts. Is I want a... Uh, when I throw the sidewinder around, I want the plane to turn, man. So I don't want 10 mile... Even short, using the brakes, the air brakes, and the flaps, and trying to get a short as possible turn... It's still pulling teeth. Hey, I gotta stop right there. It's 20 minutes after the hour, and I want to play my uh, featured song for the day, which is... Uh, Brad sucks, uh, borderline, out of it, which I'm starting to become after the five o'clock hour. But it's time for the smoke break and uh, to raise a mug and say cheers and feature our song of the day, and I'll be right back. Oh, sorry about the eardrums.
Brilliant. Brilliant. All right, I'm going to give it another run on these guys and maybe do one more thing or two. But we're pushing maximum hours for a live stream. But then at a certain point, you're it's too long and you're, you lose all ability to edit it. So now that WTC1220 has gone, um, if there's anybody else out there that is stopping in or might be tuning in, uh, if you want me to subscribe to your channel, please say hi in the chat room. That gives me access to a button that says go to channel. And I can easily go to your channel and subscribe. And if not, please like and subscribe. That would be greatly appreciated. Okay. Oops. No, I was thinking quit. Okay. AMGU. So that was the CCRP mode. The unguided bombs kind of got an idea, failed. Submunitions dispenser. Submunitions dispenser. Okay. Ripple. You know, I should have probably been doing that. That's something that would have helped. I'm dumb for that last mission, not double check checking the spacing because I really should have spaced some of those out. Okay. Or tried to figure that out. It doesn't tell me, though. what my loadout is but he'll tell us in addition to the unguided bombs we used in the previous lesson okay we also have the kmgu submunitions dispenser mgu we have four dispensers loaded with 12 ao 2.5 rt fragmentation bombs apiece dispensers are a useful weapon when needed to lay down an elongated path of destruction Great for convoys and runways. Okay, let me get a real good look at what these things look like. Again, should have really done that in the other one. So these are, they look like steel metal containers. Jotting that down. I don't know about you, if you've never played this before, I really recommend a notepad. Run down to 7-Eleven, Walmart, whatever. Little spiral notebook. Or whatever, stickies, whatever works. I currently have the lesson in active pause mode. Press the space bar to continue. On the weapon control panel, using the interval switch, you can press V until SSC MJM series is selected. This is a special release mode for the KMGU submunition dispensers and multiple ejection racks, MER. Okay. This requires... See, how, how do people memorize all this crap? So, for this particular type of weapon, the KMGU submunitions dispenser, which looks like a steel metal container, you need to have the Otnik Knee device by using V to set it to Sepna Kimri. It is a special, let's say it's a special release mode. And they're dispersed at two second intervals. 
and Murr munitions. Multiple ejection racks. When enabled, the Cam-G submunitions are dispensed at two second intervals, and Murr munitions are released at 03 seconds apart. According to the total quantity specified by the, the salvo switch size, this allows a larger but less dense submunition coverage. Okay, and that and that control is control um, control space bar. That's the number, but we're paused. So here, c control space bar. Are dispensed at two second intervals, and mer munitions are released at 0.3 seconds apart, according to the total quantity specified by the salvo size switch. This allows a larger but less dense submunition coverage. Press the space bar down, pause the lesson, and follow the gates. Okay, so I put it in SEPMA and I'm leaving it at one because I don't need, we're gonna be going down a road and we don't need a super dense, I guess. We'll know more in a minute. As we ingress to the target, press seven to activate air to ground mode. I kept it. but try to keep your speed between 700 and 750 kilometers per hour. Oh my, I am deficient. Nose is gonna shoot up, so bring it down with the trim. When you entered air to ground mode, you probably noticed the bombing reticle on the HUD. As before, we need to line up the reticle with the target. As long as we keep our speed fast, we can get a good valid bombing solution even from low altitude. I'll let you decide to deliver the weapon either in CCIP or CCRP mode. Uh, or, uh, uh, I forgot how to switch back to the other mode. So, I don't know. Deploy. I don't think they did. That was a good run. I should have wrote down the keystroke for that. That was silly of me. Um, I'm in the wrong screen. So, um, Go to CCRP. I don't see it. How is that possible? The IP doesn't come up either. Well, huh. Well, very dumb.
I'd have to watch the start of this one just to remember which button to push. Notes. Notes, notes, notes. 35 minutes after the hour. Saturday, a snowy, a snowy, snowy winter wonderland day in Colorado. It's very pretty here. Uh, I still live in a suburb, which is ideal for somebody like me. I'd much rather be back up in, up in the mountains and have a lot of trees around me. But this it's a lovely suburb that's been around for a long, long time. So there is plenty of trees. You just, Still uh, very nice and very pretty. Put bombs on target using CCIP. Okay. In this lesson, we'll learn how to do it using a continuously computed release point mode, or CCRP. Where a CCIP mode required us to place the bombing reticle on the target at time of weapon release, CCRP mode will allow us to drop a bomb on target even when the target is no longer in view. As before, fly through all the gates ahead. No, just tell me how to get to the damn CCRP. Mode. What? Go ahead and enter air to ground mode by pressing seven. When in CCRP mode, the bomb release setting options are the same as we reviewed in CCIP mode. This includes both quantity and interval settings. Just seven, but you can also use seven for the other bombs, I thought. Just hitting seven in general, you need for the scale on the left and carrot to reach the target. Give it to us. A mile away. All right, so let's just see if that was it. It's just the seven, but that doesn't make much sense because I thought seven is just for everything, uh, air to ground. But let me make a little notation of that there, and we'll try this again. So yeah, wonderful wintry wonderland surprise today. In addition to the unguided bombs we used in the previous lessons, we also have the KMGU submunitions dispenser. In this case, we have four Little metal containers with 12 AO 2.5 RT fragmentation bombs apiece. Dispensers are a useful weapon when needed to lay down an elongated path of destruction, great for convoys and runways. 
I currently have the lesson in active pause mode. Press the space bar to continue. Still metal canisters, canisters it requires special mode here. On the weapon control panel, using the interval switch, you can press V until SSC MJM series is selected. This is a special release mode for the KMGU sub ignition dispensers and multiple ejection racks, MER. When enabled, the KMGU sub munitions are dispensed at two second intervals, and MER munitions are released at 0.3 seconds apart, according to the total quantity specified by the salvo size switch. This allows a larger but less dense sub munition coverage. Press the spacebar down, pause the lesson, and follow the gates. Do seven. That should be CCRP mode. As we ingress to the target, press seven to activate air to ground mode. Okay, do that. That's CCIP mode. Try to keep your speed between 700 and 750 kilometers per hour. When you entered air to ground mode, you probably noticed the bombing reticle on the HUD. As before, we need to line up the reticle with the target. As long as we keep our speed fast, we can get a good valid bombing solution, even from low altitude. I'll let you decide to deliver the weapon either in CCIP or CCRP mode. See? But we're in CCIP, we're not in the CCRP. On the road between the next two gates is a truck convoy marked with red smoke. This is your target. the bombing pipper slightly before it because there will be a slight release delay as the canister doors open. You may need to start a shallow dive to get a valid bombing release solution if you're using CCIP. Only damaged one for 45 percent. Yeah, I got quite a few of them that on that run. One of them just finished exploding.
Another one just went up. Alt 9, clear the autopilot. Smoko is still over here. There it is. Right ahead. Where's my reticule thing? That one. Where's our bombing site? Are we out of bombs, maybe? Yeah, I think we're just out. Well, we can't finish this anyway. Have to make a run on them. I didn't line up on him right. I need to restart anyway. All right. So, KMGU submunitions dispenser. I still need to. We're still messed up on the um, CCRP mode. So, one moment, I'm going to open up uh, search here. For DCS. When you select the air ground mode to fault 7, you're in CCIP. When you dive, you will get the bomb fall line and the pipper, which you should align over the target. Once you get the LA launch authorized, you squeeze the trigger. Okay, but how do you get to CCRP? The answer is on page 25, 26 of the manual. When you select the air to ground mode, default 7, you're in CCIP. When you dive, you will get the bomb fall line and the player and the pipper, which you should align over the target. Once you get the launch authorized, you should squeeze the trigger and release the ordnance. To use CCRP, first align the pipper over the target, then squeeze and hold the trigger. Then fly level toward the target. The computer will do the rest and release the bomb at the appropriate time. Okay, so that's what it is. It's just the difference between following the 
the sight and pressing the trigger when you're ready to go or hold and let it do its thing. Well, we'll try that. Okay. No, we won't. It's 550. So this live stream has went for as long as it needs to be uh, before I can't edit it anymore. So I just need to close this one down and then um, after uh, dinner and all that and relaxing for a little bit, I'll probably be back for another training session this evening. So one, whatever today's episode number was, like 116, 117. 117B. And it should be up in, um, you know, an hour or so. And I'll be back at it. Thank you to everybody who tuned in today. Gentlemen, uh, I don't know if some of you are uh, madams or others. But thank you so much for tuning in today and hanging out with me. Uh, we did some uh, fun things today. So. See you later this evening. Uh, or tune into my regular Sky Dude live streams Monday through Friday when possible at 1 p.m. MST. Playing us out with the song we've been playing all day because we've been at it for a while and that's Brad sucks out of it and I'm out of here.